Alright, I'll put a move marker over there. Let's push out that way, see what we can see. Hopefully we can take it out. Not the driver on. So update 11 for Hell at Loose has finally arrived and in all honesty it is a great addition to the game. We all know Hell at Loose to be a very immersive game that is as far as realism can go in a video game, one of the most realistic World War II shooters out there. And with update 11 that realism has taken another step forward. Now some of you might argue that update 11 is a bit underwhelming, it's not adding as much more to the game as say update 10 where we had new maps, a new faction, a whole load of new weapons. But this update was more focused on adding really good things to the game, making it more immersive than previous updates. So I see update 11 as a update that had to happen at some point, the game really needed this improvement. Without a doubt graphics and visual effects are key to creating that immersive feel but nothing swallows you up in a battlefield like the sound effects around you. This is the reason why a movie in a theater will always beat you watching it at home on a 32 inch TV. And the new sound effects on Hell at Loose make the battles much more intense. First of all, as we know, we had a couple of new sounds for weapons like the M1 Garen, the Browning machine gun, the 1903 Springfield sniper rifle, MP40, the STG, the MG42 and MG34. These weapon sounds are much more aggressive now, there's more grunt to them. It really feels like a weapon is going off next to you. And that combined with the sound occlusion system that was introduced in this update really draws you into the battle. The sound occlusion system in short means that sounds happening around you do get obstructed and go to a lower volume and a lower pitch because of objects in between you and the source of that sound. Explosions and guns going off, footsteps and vehicles passing by now really feel different. And what this has done, especially to a map like Carentan, where there is a ton of objects blocking the sound, really is fantastic. Before moving on with my thoughts on update 11, please let me welcome you or welcome you back to the channel. And as you will probably have guessed, I'm DGW. Subscribe to the channel if you want to stay updated on anything hella loose and remember to leave a like on the video. Also let me remind you that we still have the gift card giveaway. If you want a chance to win one of three 20 euro gift cards for either Steam, Playstation or Xbox, all you have to do is let me know down in the comments what part of update 11 or future updates that we know of from the roadmap you are mostly looking forward to. And remember to explain to me why you are mostly looking forward to that update. The winners of that giveaway will be announced in the week before Christmas. With that intermezzo out of the way, let's continue with update 11. Update 11 has brought two new weapons to the game. First of all, on the American side, the trench gun available for the Engineer level 3 and Assault level 3. Unfortunately, I only got to play with it a little bit, but it really is a brutal weapon. At close quarters, it really tears an enemy apart, literally. Unlike most other weapons where a medic can still revive a player, the trench gun at close quarters is not going to give the medic a lot of chance, unless that medic is packing a whole lot of duct tape. At close quarters this is a one shot kill, pretty much no matter where you hit the enemy. At anything beyond 15 to maybe 20 meters the gun does require 2 maybe even 3 shots to take down an enemy and after about I guess 35-40 meters the gun is pretty much useless. It does have quite a low rate of fire and it takes a while before it gets reloaded even though it only carries 6 bullets. On the German side we now have the Fallschirmgewehr or FG42. This German BAR rival packs quite a punch. I've not personally been able to play with it because neither my sniper or my automatic rifleman have been ranked up high enough yet. From what I understand from other players it is pretty much like the BAR. In a single shot or very short burst it is very deadly but anything above that so fully automatic or longer bursts it is completely uncontrollable. So those longer bursts or full auto will work in close quarters combat, say clearing out a building or a trench, but if you want to take down an enemy at medium to long range, you will need to learn to single shot this. We also learned from recent development brief that the weapon is not zeroed properly, so there is improvements coming to that shortly. By the way, it sounds amazing. Combined with a better sound system, I think one of the most impactful changes is the addition of half tracks. These mobile garrisons offer a whole new world of opportunities of trying to flank the enemy and creating multiple flanks. Unlike red zone garrisons, 
the half track will not get overrun if an enemy is within 100 meters. This will only happen when the enemy gets within 10 meters. Moreover, the half track will warn you of enemies closer than 50 meters to that half track, similar to the radar function that the OPs and garrisons have. Now, the spawn wave timer on the half tracks is 60 seconds whereas for garrisons it is 40 seconds, so that does nerf it a little bit. But I think that's more realistic, otherwise you could pretty much park it inside a enemy stronghold and have wave after wave of friendlies coming in. And by the way, the half-track only functions as a garrison if it is stationary and the engine is switched off. The half-tracks do not eliminate the use or need for a red zone garrison, but it does make you much more flexible. You can get one or two garrisons up in enemy territory, somewhat further away from the point you're trying to attack, and use a half-track to kind of drive around that point and have multiple angles of friendlies spawning in. These friendlies can then obviously place their OPs to have more fixed positions. Once I've had a bit more practice with these half-tracks, I will make a full tutorial video on those. Now before wrapping this video up, I will quickly go through some other changes that we've seen in this update. First of all, the Panther has been removed and replaced by the Panzer IV. As I never play as tanks, I cannot give you an on-hand experience, but what I hear from guys that I often play with, it is exactly like a medium tank on the US side. Pretty vulnerable, but does offer some advantages over a heavy tank with being more nimble and faster. While speaking about tanks, the recon vehicles are a lot less powerful, so they do not pack as much of a punch as they used to. Also, in an effort of Black Matter to make the tank battles on Hella Luz a lot more realistic, they have increased the fuel cost of heavy tanks from 400 to 600 fuel, and the Jumbo 75 from 300 to 500 fuel. This in combination with changes to the resource system makes acquiring these heavy tanks a lot more difficult. And that exactly was the idea of the developers. Heavy tanks tended to be overutilized in the game, but with final stand no longer being available and encouraged only adding resources for nodes that have been built instead of also on the team's flat rate, getting those big boys onto the battlefield has become a lot more difficult. And the last major changes that have come with update 11 is the addition of offensive to several existing maps. The Germans can now attack on Purple Heart Lane, Hill 400 and Carentan, and the Americans can attack on Foy. It was announced that AT guns would be more powerful, but it seems that they're a bit too powerful, because they can two-shot literally any tank at the hull. Most scrap metal casualties in World War II were because of AT guns, but a Tiger taking two rounds from an AT gun at the front would never destroy it. So we can see some changes to the AT guns coming up shortly. Now, a couple of the changes that came with update 11 I've covered plenty full in other videos that I've made, so I will leave links to those videos in the description below. With the changes that update 11 brings, I will need to revisit some of the tutorials that I've made, so you can expect some new videos coming up in my tutorial playlist shortly. And I also have some random gameplay videos and highlight videos coming up in my gameplay playlist. To stay updated on these new videos, remember to subscribe to the channel and leave a like on this video. Other than that, I thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one.